Meridian is an imaginary line that separates east from west. And remember, our targets move from east to west, and eventually our telescope will run out of room and hit an obstacle. So our imaging session becomes interrupted because we either have to stop the imaging session or manually flip Meridian so we can continue on. And that's where automated Meridian flip comes in. And Nina makes it extremely easy. And our imaging session is now fully automated. Hey everyone, it's Tony with Hidden Light Photography and I am super excited for today. We've already learned the various tidbits that it takes to have a successful imaging session, such as setup and balance, cable management and polar alignment and connecting all of your equipment. Well, today we're learning how to set up an automated meridian flip, which is the key to having uninterrupted imaging throughout the entire night. And then in the next video, we're gonna learn how to set up a sequence which calls into action everything that you have worked so hard to set up in this channel so far. So if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button. I don't want you to miss out on any valuable information. Let's head over and get started. What exactly is Meridian Flip? Generally, your target is gonna start on the Eastern sky and your telescope is going to be on the west side of the pier or west side of your mount to image in the eastern sky. And remember, your target tracks from east to west. So your telescope is moving closer and closer to your tripod or another obstacle that might be in the way. And eventually it'll run out of room and hit. Now, as your target gets to meridian or the imaginary line separating the eastern sky from the western sky, we need to either stop imaging or flip the telescope to the eastern side of the pier or mount so you can continue imaging in the western sky. Meridian flip is just that. A meridian flip is moving the telescope from the west side of the pier to the east side of the pier. And Nina has a way to fully automate that. And what Nina does is it'll actually stop your guiding, stop your imaging, flip the scope from the west side of the pier to the east side of the pier, recenter your image and re-rotate it if needed, re-autofocus if you have it set up that way, and then restart guiding and then continue on through the rest of your imaging session. And we're gonna learn exactly how to set all of that up so you can have a fully automated, uninterrupted imaging session. Before you jump into setting up your Meridian Flip, there's a few things I want you to be mindful of. The first thing is cable management. As your telescope flips Meridian, there's a lot of movement. Your RA is flipping 180 degrees. Your declination is swinging the telescope around so it can realign with the target. So make sure your cable management is dialed in because I don't want you to have any snags or mishaps. If you need help with cable management, I'm gonna throw a link to my video in the description of this video. The next thing I want you to be mindful of is balance. Now, balance, keep in mind, if you have it east heavy, after meridian flip, it's going to be west heavy. And if you're too far off, it can affect image quality. So if you need help with balance, I'm going to throw a uh, link to my video in the description of this video as well. The last thing that I want you to be mindful of, and it's extremely important, what is your telescope's worst possible position? And how long after meridian does it take to get there? How do we find that out? First of all, what is worst possible position? Worst possible position is the telescope's orientation to get to an obstacle the fastest. On my setup, my tripod leg is going to be the first thing that my telescope hits. Okay, Your setup might have something a little bit higher up that the telescope would hit before the tripod leg. 
So once you find whatever your telescope is going to hit first, we need to orientate the telescope to get it there the fastest. Here's an example. My telescope basically pointed to zenith or straight up and down is going to get it to the tripod leg faster. Now, if I were to orientate the telescope this way, notice how I have a lot more movement before it gets to the tripod leg. So this orientation is going to get me to the tripod leg the fastest, okay? What is yours? What's your telescope orientation and what's the obstacle that's going to that it's going to hit first? Once you have that information, find a target that's going to cross over that path. For me, since my telescope pointed at zenith, it's going to get me to my tripod leg the fastest. I'm going to find a target that's going to cross zenith. And then I'm just going to go ahead and track it. Okay. And what I'm going to do is let it get to Meridian and let it keep on tracking until it gets too close to the tripod leg. Now, once you do that, how many minutes did it take to get from Meridian to uh, basically too close to the obstacle? How many minutes did that take? Once you have that number, jot it down. We're going to use that here in just a minute. Let's say you have a telescope that's too long. So in your worst possible position, you can't actually get to Meridian. That's okay. They have what's called peer extensions. Here's an example of one. And what that does is it'll raise your mount to give you more clearance between your telescope and the obstacle. So once you have your worst possible position and the, the minutes from Meridian to that obstacle, and you have that jotted down, we're gonna go ahead and continue. Now we're gonna set it up and that number is gonna come into play. To set up an automated Meridian flip in Nina, all you have to do is go to Options, Imaging, and here it is. Now, you do want Nina to be able to plate solve. If you don't have that set up, check out my initial setup for Nina video. I'm going to have a link to that posted in the description of this video. I go over exactly how to get plate solving working, and you're going to need it in order to get the full benefits of this feature. Now, let's go through these one at a time, and this is also where the number you got from the previous step comes into play. Minutes after Meridian, this is how long do you want Nina to wait after Meridian before even thinking about performing a Meridian flip? I have mine set at one. I recommend one. It allows you to get just past Meridian, but also not wait too long. So I have mine set at one. Max minutes after Meridian, this is where that number comes into play. Let's say you had 10 minutes from meridian to worst possible position. You want this number to be less than that. Whatever number yours was, you want it to be less. Because this is the max amount of minutes after meridian before Nina says we're flipping. And having this number set too high can cause a collision. Now, if you have um, mount limit set, perfect. Make sure your mount limits uh, work with this. In other words, if you have a mount limit set that will stop the mount before it reaches the position allotted by this number or allowed by this number, you're never going to flip Meridian because your mount is stopping prior to that and Nina's not going to get the signal to flip. Now, I don't run mount limits because I've had issues with them. Uh, if you do not run mount limits, please understand it is risky 
And uh, if you have um, a night where you're less than attentive and you have a tripod collision, it can cause catastrophic damage to your mount and also damage your telescope. So please be aware, if you run without limits, it is risky. Um, now, you're probably thinking, uh, what if I have an exposure running and it hits this point? That's not a problem. Nina pays attention to that. Let's use six minute exposures as it'll be easier to explain with these numbers here. You get right to Meridian. Nina starts a six minute exposure. Nina will allow it because it'll complete within this allotted time. Immediately after that exposure, Nina's going to flip Meridian. Let's say you were 30 seconds past Meridian. Nina is not going to start the six minute exposure because it'll run past this number. Instead, what Nina's going to do is after that exposure, that previous exposure stopped, Nina's going to stop further exposures and wait for this one minute mark to hit and then flip Meridian. On the flip side, Let's say three minutes prior to Meridian, Nina was uh, starting a six minute exposure. Obviously, that's going to now be three minutes past Meridian. That falls within these numbers. And as soon as that exposure is done, Nina's going to flip Meridian. Use the telescope side of the pier. Nina will know where the telescope is and then flip Meridian accordingly. So I would leave this on, recenter after flip, turn that on. This is where plate solving comes into play. You want Nina to maintain the framing that you had set up. Nina's going to need to recenter after the flip because, at, you know, when you're flipping, your telescope can end up somewhere else. And I don't mean entirely. I mean, your framing is going to be a little bit off. So Nina has the ability to recenter your target based off of your framing after the meridian flip so everything stays exactly the way you have it. And I think that's a really cool feature. So make sure you have plate solving uh, uh, on or you're able to plate solve so that then you can take advantage of that. Scope settle time after flip. This is just like when you're slewing. Right? You have a settle time after slewing, especially if you have a belt-driven mount, you want to uh, have it settle so the vibrations of the belts uh, dissipate and not uh, affect your image. So uh, make sure you have a settle time set. It's gonna. I would do whatever you're using for slewing as, well, Meridian Flip is one big slew. So uh, have that set up. Pause before Meridian. I have mine at zero. I do not want Nina to pause before Meridian. I just want it to carry on and utilize this right here. Autofocus after flip. I have mine turned on. We're in a different part of the sky. Uh, or what I should say is our scope is uh, in a different position. Things shift. You have flexure. It's natural. So I autofocus after the flip to correct for any of that. Rotate image after flip. I have that on. That just fine tunes the rest of it. Uh, if for whatever reason you need to adjust rotation, it's going to do that. And it's also going to flip your image that's displayed so it looks the same. And that is how you set up uh, automated Meridian Flip and Nina. And I hope you found that useful. Do me a favor, that channel icon that just popped up, hit that channel icon and subscribe. I don't want you to miss out on any valuable information because we're about to learn how to put everything we learned together. Throw a comment in the comment section and check out that next video. Until the next time, clear skies.